So we've literally been going about five minutes, getting some nibs. <laughs> My first fish deep dropping here in Fiji. Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. This little video is gonna be more of a catch and cook type video, mainly more on the cooking side. I was lucky enough to go out today and get myself a beautiful Bedford snapper. First time I've ever caught one, first time I've ever gonna, ever gonna cook and eat one. So I thought I'd make a video of it. So I'm gonna do like a creamy garlic sauce. So I might do like cassava chips, maybe some veggies and creamy garlic sauce with the Bedford snapper. So what I do while I'm gonna get things prepped up here and get things ready in the kitchen, I'm gonna share with you the clips of me catching this fish. I went out today with my friend Hunter and within five minutes, we were straight onto a nice big wahoo, which was awesome because it's becoming coming towards the end of the wahoo season. So it was awesome to get one of those on board. And then caught this sucker right here, which absolutely stumped me. I had no idea what it was. Like I said, I've never done any real deep drop fishing here. So I had to ask a friend uh, what this was. And so Bedford Snapper, and he's told me the best eating fish in the ocean, his favorite. So I'm excited to get into it. So enjoy these clips and I'll see you right back here. All right, so when he just got going and the rod went off straight away and I got a wahoo on here, we didn't have the cameras out or anything. So you missed most of the fight. Got some uh, stamina. All right, nice work, Hunter. All right, nice. on the scoreboard, straight Ooh, up. That. Sick. Happy with that for the first five minutes. So we've literally been going about five minutes and this sucker just hit on uh, just one of the divers. We're, we're actually trawling out to do some, some stuff that I've never done before. So you guys will see that in this video, but uh, yeah, you could, you could literally turn around and go home and be happy for the day with a fish like this. But like I said, we've been going five minutes, so it's just the beginning. So we'll, I'll gut and gill this guy, get him on ice and uh, yeah, wahoo for dinner. Sick. All right, guys, I'm doing something that I've never done before and I've been dying to do it, but I don't, I still don't really have the setup for it, but I'm giving it a crack anyway. And that is dropping some baits down super deep. So I've set up a bit of a paternoster rig here with a couple of squid heads, a little Christmas light on there, and uh, just sounded up some fish in about 200 meters of water, a little bit more than 200 meters. Um, so we're gonna drop this down and uh, yeah, see if we get any inquiries. Let's do it. So it's probably gonna take a few minutes to uh, get to the bottom. There. Man, I hope we've got enough line on here. If something mega grabs it, I definitely don't have enough line. All oh, right. <laughs> Getting some nibs. <laughs> oh no. That was a big nib and I didn't have my drag set. <laughs> Spewing. Alright, got ya. Yeah. Do you want to get the belt for me? I should have yeah. got that out first. Where is it? Um, underneath the, the helm there. Now I'm just going to get up and beat the sharks. 
That's a big one. Heavy. <laughs> Hard to tell, I've never done this before, so. Well, oh, give me a bit now. I'm assuming it'll get to a point where like the barrel trauma will just kill it and it will just be floating mm -hmm. up. Woo! Lactic acid. It burns! <laughs> I'm under the faded line, so you gotta be close. Here we go, We've got colour. Yeah, there it is. We have colour. Oh, what is that? Some sort of. Some sort of snapper. Mm -hmm. Wow. Nice. All right. First one on board. We'll get this unhooked. So there we go. My first fish deep dropping here in Fiji. Some sort of snapper. I'm not sure if you know exactly what this is, let me know in the comments. Uh, I'll do a bit of research when I get home and I'll, I'll let you know in the description. Or uh, actually, I'll just write it at the bottom of the screen now. But um, yeah, it, it looks awesome. It, it definitely looks tasty. So uh, yeah, we'll get this one on ice. Get back on the spot. So what a fantastic day it was today. From a weather point of view, it was just amazing. And then to nail that Wahoo first thing, um, you know, right at the end, if not Wahoo season's pretty much finished. So it was an absolute bonus to get that on board. Um, and then to get this little puppy here um, was absolutely fantastic. So let's get into it. So I haven't scaled it, left the scales on, and I'm just gonna fillet it like I would any other fish. And then we'll skin in the uh, take the skin off and the scales. So when I do this and I want to keep the guts intact in the fish and just take the flesh off. I just cut around like the rib cage. So there we go. That off. Nice big white fleshy chunky piece. So we'll sit this down, get the other side. Lucky my wife's not home. Scales in the kitchen. So there we have two amazing looking fillets of Bedford Snapper. On first appearance, it's like really sort of, it's gonna be really white and flaky, like once it's cooked, I reckon. Um, and if you're an American, they're not fillets, they're fillets. One of my mates here always cracks up at me when I say fillet. Cool, all right, so what I'm gonna do now then is I'm gonna chop these up into sort of steak sized pieces. Um, and then I'm gonna sit those in the fridge and then we'll get cracking on making the garlic sauce. So a couple ways that you can get rid of the, that bloodline, just trim it out like this. That bit just goes gray. It doesn't taste all that good when you cook it. So that's why my dogs hang around. So you can do it like that, like I did, just sort of cut it out like a V. Well, the other way you can do it is you sort of, you come down this way and then cut down like that and then do the same. And then that gets that piece off. Gracie, 
All right, so there you go. Nice, big, white, fleshy, chunky steaks of Bedford Snapper. Let's get it in the fridge. Let's get onto this sauce. All right, so what you're gonna need for the sauce is one onion, garlic, like preferably like real garlic, but when you're on a remote island, you get what you can. You get what you get and you don't get upset, as my kids would say. So minced garlic, you need some butter, salt, pepper, stock, veggie stock, or like white wine. I'm, I don't drink wine, so stock's my go-to for that. Um, and cream. All right, so we chop the onion. You want the onion super fine, right? So what I do is cheat a little bit and use this little ninja tool. Chuck the onion in here. And there we go. Super fine onion. All right, let's get into this. So I did forget to mention you're gonna want some olive oil because if you just put the butter in there without olive oil, you're gonna end up burning the butter. So you wanna put, let me sit you guys up here. So what I do is I put like a dash of this in and then the butter, like a fair whack of butter. This is not exactly a healthy dish. So yeah, like I said, that oil is gonna stop the butter from burning. All right, then you put in the onion. And what you do is you cook this, you cook the onion until it stops smelling like onion. As this cooks, the onion sort of goes a little bit transparent. Oh, it's actually stinging my eyes, dude. So you don't want to cook it to like oblivion. You don't want to brown the onion. You just want to, I don't know, make, you make it sort of soft. Then garlic. My wife's away, so I can load up on this. All right, so now that onion, I can no longer smell any onion. It's just about to start going brown, which we don't want. So we put in some stock. We turn the heat down. And while that's simmering away, we put the cream in. Oh yeah. Mix it all in. Now so we also put a bit of pepper, a pinch of salt. So yeah, as this simmers away, it gets thicker and thicker. And the other thing you can put in, which I forgot to mention, is obviously it's better fresh, but we don't have it here on the island, so parsley. Bit of parsley, mix that in there so that when you smile later on, you've got some green shit in your teeth. All right, so let's let that sit for a little bit. I've actually got some uh, cassava boiling away here because we're gonna make some cassava chips. Um, and I'll get some veggies ready and the fish. And with the fish, all I'm gonna do is a little bit of butter, a little bit of salt uh, on a fry pan and then cook it in the fry pan like that. Garlic sauce on top, oh, mate. It's gonna be good. All right, bit of butter, bit of salt. Fish goes straight on. Sauce is looking good. Veggies are almost done. We are on track. Oh yeah. Oh my god, that looks amazing. Oh my god. Look. So good. Alright. Oh yeah. Alright, Bedford Snapper, peas, carrots, cassava chips. I don't know if I've done these on the channel before. This this stuff is amazing. Mm. And the garlic sauce. Oh my. Bit of everything, eh? All right. 
the test. The taste test. My friend, Neil Whippy, if you're watching this, you have just, you literally just messaged me like an hour ago, telling me this is the best fish in the ocean. Oh my God, racy. It's so good, so good. Oh my God, it's like, Obviously the garlic sauce is amazing. I often do this garlic sauce with yellow fin. Trying to just think what it's like. It's sort of like when you do like lamb or something in the slow cook or like pulled pork. It's kind of like that, but fish. Like it's, uh, it's not stringy, but it just, it, it's amazing, just falling apart in my mouth. Tastes phenomenal. I'm definitely gonna do a lot more of this uh, deep drop stuff. Um, so I'm here with all my friends right now. My wife, Rebecca, and Morgan and Denver, my daughters, they're all in Australia right now. So literally I'm batching it, and uh, I'm gonna do a hell of a lot more of, of that fishing, <laughs> deep dropping. But when they come back from Australia, I'm gonna get them to bring some electric reels and stuff. Although, let me know in the comments, what do you think? Is it cheating using an electric reel? Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm sort of, I sort of feel like it is. I feel like it's not really fishing using an electric reel. But uh, tell you what, this was amazing. Hard work winding it up from 200 plus meters, uh, but absolutely worth it. So if you'd like this video, um, obviously give us a thumbs up and subscribe and leave a comment because all of that stuff helps. Um, but if you're into the catch and cook type videos, click on this playlist up here. This is gonna take you through to heaps more of our catch and cook stuff. I hope you enjoy some of our previous catch and cook videos, some of the recipes that we shared, and I am gonna get stuck into this, or you get stuck into the rest of those videos. Catch you later, guys.